हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू हाफ सेट आई एम हफ्सा और हाफ सेट एज यू नो मी हेयर we are going to discuss the stages of sleep today which a lot of you have requested so i'm really excited to talk about it um like i've mentioned before you can also find me on an academy all you have to do is click the an academy icon um top right um where you see my banner right and if you do choose to subscribe don't forget to use my code that you see over here all right um now before i do go on to um explain about the cycles of sleep what i want to tell you is i know i've not been able to be consistent so i'm sorry for that but starting from today onwards what we are going to try to do is i know all of you have your exam on the 16th of september or um from the 16th of september right so i'm going to try to get one video not i one video a day every day okay on something that i think is really important for your exam all right um and i'm going to try to keep this up every day so do come back here and watch and like and subscribe if you like it all right now let's go ahead before i move on to the actual um material let me tell you about this wonderful platform called an academy where i'm an educator um you get access not just to my videos i've made a lot of free videos as well you can just follow the link and go watch them they'll be really really helpful for your exam as well and if you would like to get subscription dm me or you can simply say get subscription and then you have access to paper 1 paper 2 and everything in the world that you could think of you'll get a 10% off if you choose to use my code um now enough of my banter let's actually talk about why we sleep what are the different stages of sleep um as well all right um yes let me fix this all right stages of sleep we know there are four stages but how do they begin how do they end oh my god it's so mysterious isn't it also very interesting now why do we sleep um evolutionary psychologists have found that there is sort of um you know this is a function of evolution itself which has given us a unique waking sleeping stage we know that we have a 24 hour circadian rhythm right um or a biological clock um now for people where the day and night isn't split almost equally in countries like norway where 6 months is day and 6 months is night now those people would tend to have 24 hour circadian rhythms all right and this is our biological clock basically um all right now what do we have yes and this has sort of maximized our chances of survival that is because during the day we are fully awake we are alert and we would hunt right but in the night we couldn't see and we would there be a lot of predators um and they be all up at night and since we couldn't see uh, we could get hunted down and killed therefore we would go sleep in a cave or wherever we would protect ourselves and therefore we would survive that was most important now sleep also has at least two restorative functions it actually has a lot of restorative functions first of all is protein synthesis throughout your body you may not notice it but it does happen um the other one is about maintaining plasticity of neural connections um you know neural connections that face wear and tear in the day whether it's your muscles all neurons throughout your body face some sort of uh, you know repair um replenishing all of that happens and now sleep also helps in improving learning right consolidation of memory we wouldn't remember you know if people are deprived of deep sleep or rem sleep particularly um they show lapses in their memory and creativity so sleep is very important for a lot of restorative functions your energy your learning your memory your creativity neural connections the way the neural pathways function okay um so sleep is a combination of patterns we know or not all sleep is made equal um there are varying degrees of sleep which starts with a slight drowsiness and goes to a very deep sleep where even if people are screaming happens with me i don't know if it happens to you where if people are even screaming around you you do not wake up right let's find out how that happens and why it happens um i hope you're still with me by now okay what am i doing one moment Okay now meanwhile you can look at the picture and that shows the various stages of sleep i will be doing a lot of explanation here um and then the notes will be flashed in the next page all right 
we start off with a semi you know wakeful state of uh, where we sort of don't know if it's real or whether we're in a dream and this is called the hypnagogic state where you don't know you know when you remember something about yesterday you don't know if you saw it when you were awake or whether you were dreaming um, now your brain or your eyes might be open your brain might be awake but your body is in a semi paralytic state um, okay this is caused this is called the hypnagogic state you do feel relaxed and what happens is beta waves which have a frequency of around 13 or 14 to around 30 hertz start sort of um, you know being given out um, all right and these waves begin to appear followed by alpha waves in stage one you see a maximum of um, you see a little bit of beta waves which start off the sleep and then you see alpha waves mostly all right and this is called non-REM sleep because this is um, sort of not your rapid eye movement sleep basically and that is how sleep is categorized you have your four stages of non-REM sleep non-rapid eye movement basically so this is actual sleep where your body is asleep um, and your eyes sort of don't move a lot okay um, so you have here where you see most of your waves are alpha right and this is your wakeful stage where you can see a lot of beta waves and there are some beta waves here as well now your alpha waves can have a frequency of around 7 to 8 to 18, um, sorry, to 13 hertz. I can see that I'm writing it, but my brain reads something else. All right. Um, so then you have stage two where you see these K complexes or spindles, right? You see short bursts of activity, um, but the rest of it is mostly theta waves. Now theta waves will have a frequency of around three or four to around seven hertz all right very important now as and when um, sort of the stages keep increasing right stage one to stage two to stage three to stage four the waves increase in amplitude they increase in amplitude which means that they get much slower and they get deeper and the frequency goes down right because you don't have a lot of short waves going up and down up and down but the frequency goes down and then the amplitude increasing you have longer waves as and when you go down from stage one um, wakefulness to stage one to stage two and to stage three and four finally this would be your stage three and this would be stage four this would be rapid eye movement stage which looks a lot like your stage one and stage two sleep right we'll talk about that in a little bit of a detail uh, now what happens in your stage four sleep stage four sleep is the deepest where most of your delta waves appear which have a frequency of about zero to four hertz most important please remember this as well all right uh, we're going to move to the other page where we have notes about all of the different um, stages that we'll talk a little bit more about i hope you're understanding so far all right right so in the stage two from stage one you move to stage two where you have a lot of theta waves right and these k complexes or sleep spindles where you see sharp bursts of activity in the brain um, occur but mostly apart from these you see theta waves that means the brain waves are basically slowing down all right um, then you have stage three uh, now we'll talk about the eeg later this is the electroencephalogram uh, which sort of helps you measure brain activity, right? Grows even more slow and slow in stage three. You have delta waves appearing here, but most of the waves here would be theta and some delta waves, right? Low in frequency, high in voltage, high in amplitude. Most important to remember here. Lastly, you enter the deepest stage of uh, non-REM sleep, right? This is actual sleep, whereas REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep is paradoxical sleep after all. Stage four of sleep, you have mostly delta waves here and it's very, very difficult to wake up from here. Um, you have a lot of terrible disorders here as well sometimes, those we'll talk in the next class. Um, the delta waves, yes, this is the slowest here, you reach the highest amplitude and the lowest frequency. What happens is your heart rate, uh, respiration, temperature and blood flow, all of that is reduced, okay? So this is the truest form of sleep where um, hormones are secreted where your body repairs itself where memory consolidation happens all of that happens and this is this is very important for us to function normally there is a rebound here also when we haven't gotten deep sleep for a long time then when we sleep we tend to go to deep sleep more quickly that would be delta rebound okay 
we only generally listen to a rem rebound but there is a delta rebound as well um, all right now after passing what happens is you might think that a rapid eye movement sleep which is also known as paradoxical sleep might happen immediately after the fourth stage which is not true all right um, so you go through stages one then two then three then four and then three and two and one and then you don't wake up because 90 minutes is about uh, one cycle all right and you don't wake up you begin to move into the rapid eye movement sleep rapid eye movement because um, your eyes are rapidly moving even though your lids are shut and then um, the eye movements are really irregular there's also muscle tension in your limbs um, now this can be measured through an electrooculograph. okay e let's just say e o g all right and this can be measured through an electromyograph emg muscle tension and this is very very important to be measured in rem sleep because extra or too much of these activities can lead to parasomnias or they can be an indication of parasomnias very important please note this down um all right now eeg shows beta activity yes right you see beta activity here as well right which you see in stage one almost at the beginning of stage one but you are truly asleep most of your dreams occur in the rapid eye movement stage itself um, but this appears like stage one or stage two sleep, which it isn't. It is rapid eye movement sleep. Um, your brain sort of is active, even though you're asleep. Um, your eyes are constantly moving. Your um, There's a lot of muscle tension. Even though your body is paralyzed, your muscles want to move. So basically what you do in your uh, dreams, you think you're actually doing it. Through the night, yes, you are going to move from complete, you're going to move from a lot of stages from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, then 4 to 3 to 2, not always 1, sometimes REM after 2. So 4, 3, 2, REM and then again 2, 3, 4, um, okay, and the cycle would continue. Sometimes just 3, 2 because what happens is, let me show you here in sleep patterns. Um, deep sleep reduces after a few cycles so you would get stage 4 sleep in the first cycle in the second cycle um, but not from the third cycle onwards okay after four hours of sleep the first four hours of sleep you don't get a lot of deep sleep and what sometimes happens is you go from the second stage to the third stage and then from the third stage to the second stage and then directly you get REM you don't even have to go to the first stage and then get REM and then again you would move to the second stage or the third stage or not the third stage and then again you would move to either the first stage and REM or just REM um, remember this this is very very important for your exam as well right um, please take a good look at this and this has been measured through the EEG which is used to measure brain activity during sleep there's basically um, a lot of um, what are those called electrons yeah attached to the skull uh, measuring devices attached to the skull and those are what are used to measure brain activity whether the waves are slow whether the waves are fast or depending on that so this basically amplifies your brain activity um, so that it looks like a lot more than is actually happening and that is how we measure it the electroencephalogram is what is used best to measure sleep activity all right what this measures is brain waves through the electrodes that are attached to the skull that is why encephalo to your skull right so brain activity through measuring uh, brain waves right it amplifies the brain waves okay why is this not writing all right and then you have the electromyogram which basically checks for muscle tension and then this one checks for eye movements very important please note this down all right um, and then we have yes we do have a fine-tuned biological clock we do have circadian rhythms now this is important for us to remember that these are controlled by the hypothalamus and the ascending reticular activating system or the reticular act, uh, reticular formation which is present in the brain stem right this is actually what really really controls our circadian rhythm you might get questions on this as well so please note down um, all right yes your blood sugar your pulse your hormone levels and activity levels uh, about a day are also controlled by the hypothalamus along with the reticular formation uh, another important point that i wanted to attach here is the rem rebound what happens is when people are deprived of rapid eye movement sleep for a long time uh, when they when they are allowed to go back to sleep after maybe three or four days 
um, the duration that it takes, the time that it takes to reach REM sleep when they start from stage 1 is lesser. Okay, so this reduces, the time gap reduces. And what happens is the REM sleep increases in quantity. Okay, it increases in time basically or quantity. That is known as REM rebound. When you don't get it a lot, then what happens is when you suddenly do sleep, when you're allowed to sleep, the frequency um, of the cycles of REM cycle increases and also um, the time period that you have the rapid eye movement sleep for also increases. This shows that sort of dreams are important. REM sleep is also very, very important for us to maintain our memory, for us to maintain our creativity. Um, yes, right? This is what I told you was the REM rebound stage. And that is about it. In the next class, we'll talk about parasomnias and dysomnias, which are also really, really important, right? Very interesting as well. I hope you learned something from today's class. Um, I am going to do my best right till your exam to help all of you out. If you do want any particular classes, you can message me on YouTube or an academy. Like, subscribe and share if you did like the class and if you found it helpful. If you want classes in Hindi particularly, please message me here. And if I have enough students requesting, I will put up the same video for you in Hindi by tomorrow. Um, but I will need a lot of requests. All right. Or you can comment on the video itself saying ma'am, please in Hindi. All right. That is about it. You can find me on an academy. You can join my telegram group where you have wonderful resources as well. And you can find out all about when and where I take classes. That is about it from me today. Um, have a great night. Bye bye. All the best for your revision.